What up, everybody? It's the Rap Throwback, and we back. We back for another retro, well, reaction, review, whatever you want to call it. We do it another record. I'm throwing it back. That's right, another throwback. Today we have uh, Dr. Dre's 2001. Straight out of Aftermath. Yes, sir. So, oh, yeah. uh, Dr. Dre production. Uh, at the time, very anticipated record. Yeah, this came out in what, 99? 99, yep. Very highly anticipated for sure, and Aftermath was uh, gaining some buzz. Yep. Uh, I think Dre just discovered Eminem. Yep. So he was getting that buzz. I think M had dropped one or two albums already. One album. Was it one? Yeah. Um, you know, Death Row was uh, throwing shots. Yeah, Death Row was trying to survive, I guess, uh, mm -hmm. for lack of a better word. There was a lot of people that left, and they were trying to build a new empire with new artists. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, a lot, of, uh, a lot of disses going their way. Yeah, crazy times. A lot of disses, a lot of subliminal disses here and there. Rappers, uh, just a crazy time to be in uh, to be in the rap game at that point. Right. You know, Dr. Dre was uh, building an empire and building a wall around it. Yep. You ain't welcome if you were this person or that. Right. And some people were like, "Fuck you" or whatever. You know, I remember the beef back then about Dr. Dre saying he wasn't doing gangster rap or something like that. Right. And yeah. some people didn't take kindly to that anymore. You know, so there were some lines drawn. Um, I almost forgot all about that. Yeah, pretty much. He came out with that Been There, Done That. Uh, That's right, yeah. You know, that was kind of like the, the first track he dropped, I think, after he left Death Row. And that kind of like, yeah, they were writing with the uh, gangster rap is dead. You know, like Dre was trying to move on from that. Yeah. Um, I remember that feeling, how some rappers were kind of using that, that right. gangster rap is dead shit. Um, I didn't like it. Yeah. I mean, you know? it, it was very much not dead. Yeah. It was, uh, I mean, shit. How could it be dead after what 98 came out with? It was dope. Right. Yeah. So uh, don't really get that. But at the end of the day... Um, 2001 comes out and there's still some gangster shit to be found on there. That's right. And as a matter of fact, Corrupt comes out on the same day. Yeah. Yeah. So Corrupt and Dr. Dre drop on the same day. I remember that. Yeah. Streets is a mofo. Yeah. Streets is a mother was a dope album. Mm hmm. And, you know, at the time I was expecting Dre's album to be better than Corrupt's, but you know, of course, I think that could be. It was supposed to be better than anything on the planet. Yeah, yeah. You know, but uh, man, if I was corrupt, I'd be proud of myself that day. Yeah, yeah. He uh, he came out with uh, what many consider a classic. Yeah. You know, that definitely was a classic, and very brave to come out same day, same week. You know. I think he was able to capitalize off of some West Coast buzz. You know, basically make it a West Coast holiday right. for the whole planet. And to be fair, he contributed, you know, quite a bit on 2000 as well, on 2001 as well. So mm -hmm. uh, you'll hear him, you know, in the intro and throughout the album. Yeah. So a lot of corrupt to be had that day. Hell yeah. Um, when they both dropped, we picked up the record in Longmont. Right. Longmont, Colorado, Angelo's new location. I think you bought both of them, didn't you? I did, yeah. I did buy them both. Um, I don't remember which one we listened to first. I'm not sure I bought either of them. Yeah, you might not have. I think I was just along for the ride. But, uh... I mean, I didn't buy them day one. I'm not sure if they ended up in my library later, though. I lost my whole CD catalog. Yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, I've bought Streets as a Mother a few times. I have it on vinyl. I have it nice. on CD twice. So I've, I've definitely made my contributions. But uh, yeah, definitely a good week for rap. Uh, it was 1999. We're about mm -hmm. to get to 2000. And originally the album was supposed to be The Chronic 2000. 
Yeah. But uh, Death Row came out with the compilation Chronic 2000 first. Mm-hmm. So they had to uh, change the name, and the Chronic 2000 had a lot of Dre disses. Uh, originally, it was supposed to have some unreleased Dr. Dre tracks, um, but those didn't actually make it, probably because Dre didn't allow it. But um, Yeah, they were pretty much at war. They were. But a lot of it was just behind the scenes, you know, inside baseball, legal lawyers yeah. and yeah. shit like but, that. But, man, Death Row pulled off a good one by stealing that name. You know, well, Chronic 2000. Yeah. So uh, I don't know how they were able to pull that off. I'm guessing Dr. Dre didn't, like, trademark it or whatever it is that you do to make that name yours. But, um, yeah. I don't know. I don't know if you can trademark the name of an album. Yeah, you might not be able to. You know? I don't know. Because, um, let's see, Blueprint, Jay-Z, and I think KRS-One had an album called oh, Blueprint first. I'm, okay. I'm channeling Nas there. Yeah. That's the only reason I know that. And I'm sure there's more. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, man. Um, so this is uh, Aftermath Interscope. Um, we got some new artists on here. Uh, mm-hmm. Dre's trying to bring to the forefront. We have... Uh, you know, six two, um, Hitman, Big Rock, or Miss Rock, my bad. Um, and that's about it, right? Yeah. And you got some regulars like Exhibit, Eminem, um, Nate Dog, Snoop Dog, mm-hmm. Corrupt. So you got a lot of uh, returning vets and a couple of new people. How big was Scott Storch before this album? 2001. This is 99. Um, Storch was pretty pretty big, I think, around this time. But I don't know if 2001 was before he blew up or after. Yeah, just curious, you know. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure. But, yeah, Scott Storch's name is kind of all over the album. You know, he's yeah. got his hands on it. Um, so him and Dre did some work on it with Mailman. Looks like, uh, what else do we got as far as production goes? I mean, that might be it. Mm-hmm. Just, uh, Mailman, Scott Storch, Dr. Dre, and then this one dude... Uh, Lord Finesse, who's on the last track. Hmm. But, um, yeah, man. You ready to uh, get into this, or you got any thoughts on it before we get into it? Well, I think that the world thinks that this is a classic album. Right. I'm not so sure, but we're going to find out. So right, right, right. Stick around, and we'll give you our thoughts. So, yes. And how it scores. We will... Uh, we will go through it, dissect it, and uh, yeah. we will see if this is really a classic. That's right. I think we got enough background on the record, what was happening around this time, the yeah. beefs, the politics, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and don't forget, Snoop was hanging around kind of in limbo. Right. It's probably still with no still limit. Still no limit, yeah. So, you know, can't forget about that. But, yeah, I think uh, we should check it out. Let's get it started and just... Take it track by track. All right, let's do it. All right, here we got the intro. Yeah, THX sound. Yeah. Trey D exhibit doing their thing. Yep. And to me, the intro, I mean, it's cool, but, I mean, it wasn't necessary, but I'll take it. Yeah, at least it's just an intro, and it's not very long. Trey you know, D, that's his only appearance on here. It would have been cool to get a Trey oh, D verse geez. on one of those like, you know, um, songs that yeah. Hitman or 6-2 was on. Yeah, for, or Nocturnal. Or Nocturnal, <laughs> yeah. But uh, he gets the Ren treatment here. Just show up, yeah, man. say something, take off. All right, so then the first track, The Watcher. What do you think? Uh, so... This track is probably one of the better ones, in my opinion, on the album, just mm-hmm. because, you know, it's a Dre solo. Um, That's true. It is a Dre solo. We don't have a lot of those on the album. 
we might not even have another one on the album now that I think about it. But uh, I give this one a good score. I, you know, this one, this one's on the up and up for me. I like this one. Yeah. Yeah, this one kind of grows on me a little bit. Um, it's all right, man. It's a it's a rare Dr. Dre solo. The beat is on point. Um, the hook doesn't piss me off. It's good. You know, yeah. it's all right. Um, I can tolerate the Eminem on the hook. Yeah, like I barely knew it was Eminem until I yeah. looked. I yeah. Like, oh, yeah, I, I could see it. It's strategic, though. It's strategic. All right, then we got the third, well, the second song. Yeah. Fuck You, which is just such a great title track anyways. Yeah, man, you, you read that word, you. you read the track title, and you're not sure if this is going to be a diss or what, but yeah. then you come out and find out it's going to be a super fun song. Yeah, it is a super fun song, man. I mean, Devin makes everything fucking fun. Yeah. Snoop can too, you know? Right, right. Yeah, those two are great people to make a song fun. Yeah. Dre comes correct on it. Yeah, so he this... He starts it off. This has all the elements of a classic. Yeah. Great beat, great features, fun, upbeat. Everything's great about it. I think the beat has aged really well. Yeah. The song. It sounds timeless. This is a timeless Dre beat. You would call that synthesizer that he's using, but... I have no idea. It's freaking awesome. And it's so different, but it's good. Yeah, it's dope. I say it's a it's a dope track. It's a classic track. Absolutely. It's where we learned, where I learned, I want more Snoop and Devin together, yeah. damn it. And, you know, this is the formula you should be following. So, you know, you, you follow this formula, you, you're, you can't go wrong. Uh-uh. And how many people you think... Uh, wanted more Devin after this, you know, and just looked for more Devin. I bet you there were a ton, right? Yeah. And at the time he was doing the up and smoke tour with them too. So Devin had his own set and Mm -hmm. everything. So I think this paid off really well for Devin too. And this came right after the dude album. Yeah. You know, which was a classic itself. Yeah. Right in the, was it the same year or the year before? It was the year before the dude came out. Yeah. But, uh, Hey, Devin is a lot of fun. His verse is fun. He's got punchlines, and he's dope on the hooks. Yeah. And then what can you say about Snoop that hasn't already been said? Man? Right. Effortless, you know. And uh, Devin said when he got the call from Dr. Dre, uh, Dr. Dre was reciting lyrics from an underground tape he had. He wasn't even reciting lyrics from, like, The Dude or anything like that. Wow. Or some underground tape. And Devin's like, what? You know that shit? <laughs> So that was a pretty cool story from Devin. That is dope. The classic right. track, nonetheless. Yes, sir. Next track, Still D-R-E. Classic beat from Dr. Dre. Yep, yep. You know, just you could tell that he really took his time in polishing this track and making it, just putting the bow on it, man. Right, right. And uh, it took a few writers to get the formula right. Yeah. Um, Doc least, tried, Snoop the, tried, M tried. Yep. And then Jay-Z, according to Snoop, unlocked the code. Yeah. And uh, yeah, man. I mean, you can tell that he put the extra work in on the beat, so he he had to have the right writer for it. So, And it ended up paying off. Yeah. And then uh, I like the way Snoop Dogg's featured on it. Got him on the hook and on the outro. So good shit. Yeah, I do like the way Snoop was used on here. I like the story that Dre is telling. I think some of the lyrics that Jay-Z wrote are pretty ingenious. And you couldn't ask for a stronger single, you know, a stronger hit, you know. Strong, classic track, too. Yeah. All right, next track, Big Egos. Big Egos. So here, uh, up until this point, we had a really strong start. Oh, yeah, Um, hella strong. The Watcher, Fuck You, Still Dre, all could be considered classics. You know, I'd say Fuck You and Still Dre are 10s. Yeah. I wouldn't give The Watcher 10, but it's up there. Um, But Big Egos, um, this is kind of where the album takes a dip for me. The Hook, I didn't really like. And, you know, Hitman's a little out of his element here. Yeah. After hearing Hitman's album for the first time this week, for a few times, I understand what where Hitman really excels. 
you know, and it's in more of a fun type of laid back yep. rap, you know, type of track. He does okay here, but this isn't really his jam, I don't think. I think the song could have been a lot better if they did a better hook. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think Dre gambled on this one, and I'm not sure it paid off. I don't think it paid off. Some of the lyrics are cool. You know, I like the homage to Easy e and Doc and whatever. But um, in the end, this isn't one of the gems of the record. Yeah, I mean, I grade the beat, the verses, and the hook, and you get a strike against on the hook. And then, you know, Hitman's verse just didn't deliver. So to me, you're two-thirds out of having a classic. Yeah. All right, moving on to Explosive. Now this beat is dope. Yeah, so this track is pretty sweet. Um, you got the legendary Nate Dog with the hook and a verse. Yeah. Uh, Dre corrupt Nate Dog can't go wrong with that. But we also have Hitman and Six Two on here. Yeah, you know it ends with Six Two. Right. And it could have done better without him. I guess I don't know. I wasn't that offended at first. Um, but I didn't really think I was going to get a ton of six, two everywhere or. Yeah. And he's on here a little more than I realized. Yeah. I was just thinking about it. He is six, two is the DOC's dude, Mm -hmm. but, uh, yeah, he just uh, six, two didn't deliver not even one time on this album. Yeah. He, he kind of fell flat. Um, but, you know, I'm going to enjoy this track for the guys that are on it that I like. Sure. You know, Hit Corrupt. Men and 6 twos, I guess their role is pretty small on this track. Yeah. Um, does Dr. Dre rap on this track? Nope. That's crazy. I don't think he does. It's Corrupt, Nate Dog, Hitman, and 6 2. Yep. There's no Dre on here. Now, originally, this was the easy tribute track. Yeah. And the there was I'd Dre on there. was all Dre. Yeah. But this one could even pass along as a, as a Nate Dog track. Almost, yeah, you know? I mean, he's got the hook in, the, in a verse. So, I mean, he's putting the most work in uh, on it. Yeah. Well, crazy. Interesting. I didn't realize that until you said it. But, yeah, there's no Dre verse on here. Well, it's a dope track, though. Yeah. All you need is Doctor or uh, Nate Dog and Corrupt. Hitman doesn't destroy it, but no. Six Two isn't my favorite on it. Um, anyways, we'll move on to the next track here. What's the difference? What's the difference? Um, pretty cool track. I bump it. Um, you know, my complaint's pretty small. It's just Eminem's. Contribution. Lyrics. Yeah, his contribution didn't necessarily fit what the others were rapping about, but it's all good. His, yeah. his style's just a little too different. Yeah, he sounds like he's like he's supposed to. Out of place and edgy. Look right. at me, you know. Um, not my thing necessarily for a Dre album, anyways. Like if I listen to an album, um, from Dr. Dre, especially like after hearing Chronic and whatever, and I hate to keep comparing it to the old shit, but I think there's a certain flavor that we expect from Dr. Dre, or at least that we expected back then. Now, yeah, we'll hear Eminem on his shit, sure. Yeah, and you got the Rendis on here. That's right. That's right. Uh, the subliminal Rendis. You know, the ruthless rhyme that he edited out. Right. Um, I don't know. It's a cool beat, though. I like the beat a lot. Um, so I still give the song a thumbs up. I give it a thumbs up. I mean, it, it holds its own for sure. Exhibit does really good on it, too. Yeah. You know, he's uh, he's pretty dope on it. 
Uh, yeah. Bar one, the next track. Or intro, right? I guess it's a skit. Or skit, yeah, my bad. Get yeah. thirsty, bitches. I mean, it's kind of a fun skit, but yeah. I, I could do without it, whatever. I'm not going to take points off, or I'm not sure. going to like, you know, put a chink in the armor over a skit in an intro, really, or an outro. But uh, whatever, man. Let's go to light speed. So what did you think of the light speed track here? Uh, light speed, I like the beat. I like all the crazy space age sound effects going on in the background. Yeah. And I don't think Hitman did too bad on this track either. Um, the hook. No, nah, it's a fun track, though. It's not like a gangsta right, hardcore right. track where Hitman's trying to act hard. The hook, I a, feel like it could have been a little more light. I feel like it was too lyrical. You yeah. Know, like a hook needs to be a little looser, you know, like less lyrical, I feel like sometimes. It's supposed to be catchy. It's but not think, catchy enough. Then. Right. Yeah. There's supposed to be an element of like some melody or something, you know? Yeah. Like it's supposed, I think hooks should get stuck in your head yep. for the most part. Isn't that why they're called hooks? Yeah, exactly. They hook you in, man. Yeah. Yeah, the hook falls short on, on this track a bit in that aspect. Other than that, not bad. I think Hitman held his own here. I wouldn't knock him on, on this track. It's a decent beat, you know. All right, then the next track, the iconic Forgot About Dre. Forgot About Dre. Um, good beat. Um, Eminem obviously wrote the whole thing and Dre did a good job rapping it, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I like this track. This was a, the single, wasn't it? Yeah, this was a single. Yeah. And it fits more Eminem style too. Like, cause Eminem's writing Dre's verse. Like this one yeah. sounds like it goes together. Uh, That's true. The other track, just Eminem sounded so out of place because Exhibit and Dre just... You know, Exhibit wrote his own shit, probably, and then Hitman wrote Dre's shit. Yeah. Here they all sound cohesive. Yeah, I, I give him that. I give him that. The next episode, Dre and Snoop. Classic, man. This is a classic West Coast yeah. track, for anthem, sure. Anthem, for sure. Yeah. Party track, anthem mm -hmm. track, classic track. Mm -hmm. Whatever. See, when, when you focus or when you put the spotlight on just songs like this, like just on this one right here... You almost think that the whole record's going to be a classic. Yeah. You know, because they have the next episode on there. How could it not be? Right. You know? And I kind of wonder, you know, the hip hop heads, are they more focused on the singles that came out or did they really listen to the whole album? Yeah. Like, are they you judging know? it in its entirety because or just the singles? If I'm listening to Still Dre, the next episode, um, fuck you, forgot about Dre. Like, yeah, you're yeah, gonna that. Yeah, that sounds like a shit. fucking classic. Yeah. Right? But you really gotta dig in to figure out what else is in the album, too. Yeah. You can't just base it on the singles. Next episode, though, classic Snoop, oh, yeah. Nate Dogg, even. Yeah. Uncredited, but definitely a uh, mm -hmm. big contribution. Takes you right back to, you know, the death row glory yeah. days, really, you know? Yeah. And the beat's dope. Um, this is the type of sound that helped define the new. Uh, West Coast sound, you know, or mm -hmm. you could even say everywhere for hip hop. Oh, yeah. So, all right. Let, what about Let's Get High? Let's Get High is fun. Um, upbeat. Yeah. I could play this at a party for sure. I'd put it on a playlist. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think Hitman and Miss Rock held their own on here, too. I think Hitman is more in his element here than trying to act hard on the other ones. Yeah. Well, these are the, f the type that Hitman. Yeah, you know, can excel this is the, in, a I fun think. track. That he, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's a dope track, you know. It's a it's a good bridge. It keeps it going. Yeah. And so far, the album isn't getting too exhausting, really. Like I'm not tired yet. You nope. know, I got my complaints, but I'm still listening. I'm not bored yet. Then we got bitch niggas. Yeah. Which starts off great. Um. And I don't think we get a Dre verse on here either. No. But do we? 
Well, maybe we do. Yeah, wait. Man, sometimes it's hard to remember. I think we... I'm pretty yeah, sure we do. But, uh, you know, Dre and Snoop, you can't go wrong with that. But unfortunately for me, 6-2 just didn't deliver. And neither did Hitman, to be honest. Yeah, I I agree that uh, Hitman, I don't know. This is where I start to get a little exhausted Yeah. on Hitman. Um, well, so we went from no Hitman at the beginning, and then after Still Dre, we got one, two, three, four, five Hitman tracks up until this point. Yeah, so we're starting to get a little bit too much so, Hitman. And maybe I'll dissect this after the fact, but mm -hmm. is Hitman on here more than Dr. Dre? <laughs> I'm just... He probably is. You know, he might be on here more than Dr. Dre. Yeah, he might be. Um, this, this song starts to slow it down for me, though. I, yeah. I got to say, this one isn't one of my favorites or it's not a highlight of the record even though it has dre and snoop on yeah. it it's it, a slow track you know yeah. i mean this this comes in right after the next episode and let's get high which were really upbeat tracks yeah so and six twos on it which i just you know he hasn't aged well no all right let's move on the car bomb skit, you know, whatever. Skip it. Skit, yeah. The murder I N K. Or, I mean, no, murder, murder Inc. Yeah. Miss Rock, Hitman. Yep. So Dr. this. Dre. I like the beat here. I like the piano. I actually like this track. Um, I I I bump this shit. I'm down with the track. I like the track, and it's a track that had to grow on me. I wasn't sure about the piano, but I like Miss Rock on here. Like, I'll take it. Um, the hook, I like the hook. I like the way the music is composed on here and the effects that are given to it yeah. are kind of cool. It's almost like they're making the bass backwards or something. Um, does Dre even have a verse here on this track? I don't, I don't think he does. It's hard to keep track when Dr. Dre puts his name on all of it. No. But then he's just producing. Anyways, yeah, it's a dope track, man. Education, you know, what can you say? It's a skit. It just kind of helps keep the album going. Kind of breaks it up a little bit. It gives you a little reset button. That's right. It does give you a reset button. Uh you know, it is what it is, you know. I got no opinion on it. It's yeah. just Eddie kind of doing his thing. It's you hear fine. it a couple times, it's all good. Yeah. Real track here. LA some LA niggas. So this track has Dr. Dre, Hitman, Miss Rock, Nocturnal, The Time Bomb, Coca Cum Bomb, which is cocaine, I assume. Uh -huh. Defari, MC Ren, and Exhibit. MC Ren only gets this introduction of the track you know and he gets I an intro i don't think dre raps on this you're right it's another track where dre doesn't rap on it he just produces it um king t is also on this track correct he is but he's not credited no now i think king t makes the track uh he saves it for me yeah cocaine him too you know, I don't have to skip it, but I don't know. I kind of feel like it. It's not my favorite track on here. It's probably, I don't yeah, know. This one in Bitch Niggas me, is kind of like yeah. the low points here, you know? It slowed the album down a lot. Yeah. And not like in a good way either. Like, no, it almost it's boring. brings it to a halt. It, it gets it's like, boring. It's not like a slow song that's just letting you breathe and chill, you know? You almost want to it's change just, the CD at this point. You know? Yeah. It's just kind of a boring track. And it's one of those things, too, where it's like far enough into the CD where you might actually think about changing it out, you know? Like, yeah, you might think you might that like, the CD's ah, over. 
fuck this. I'm going to throw in something else, you know, like, yeah. And we talk about placement of tracks. I don't know. This one should have been like track number two. I think it might've been better off. Yeah. Or maybe the last track on side a before we get to side B. That's kind of where I would put this thing. Or maybe the last song completely. Yeah. But it'd be hard to replace what he has there for the last song. True. Anyways, low point of the album, in my opinion. You know, I think yeah. that brings true in this room at least. Pause for porno. Yeah. Eh, whatever. It's another skit. I Jake, don't care. Jake Steed playing Contra with his penis. That's right. He's kind of a dork, too. <laughs> <laughs> but Just whatever. shooting everything in sight. Biatch. <laughs> I mean, who <laughs> talks like that? Biatch. <laughs> It's bitch, bitch, bitch. Housewife. So here we have, yep, Dre, Hitman, and Corrupt. Housewife. Mm -hmm. That's a good track. Yeah, it's a cool track. It's It's chill. Right up Hitman's alley. Yeah. Um, You know, Corrupt is pretty underrated with being able to, like, sneak into a track. Right. And just sound like a natural, you know. That's like he true. can be in a smooth track and he's okay. Then he can be on a hard track and fucking sound like yeah, like you like want to monster. fucking punch someone yep. or something, man. But yeah, I mean, he took it down a notch on the hook too. Like, brought it down. Oh yeah, he's smooth on the hook. But uh, good track, all in all, good track. Yeah, decent track here. A little bit better on this album than it was on Corrupt's album, right? Even though they were both the same track, but this one just got a little bit more. Sp- Spices from yeah, Dre, Dre you know, sprinkled in end. a few a little extra bit. sound effects in there, yeah, which is interesting. Now the next track, Act Right. It's a Act cool right. beat. Yep, uh, Hitman solo. That's right, a Hitman and solo. This is, and if you haven't heard the Hitman album on Spotify, this kind of highlights what his style is on that album, where he can do the hook, he can sing the hook. And he can rap. And he's just having fun. Yeah. Unfortunately, this track being on a Dre album, that's not what you're here for. No. So I want to give Hitman credit, but at the same time acknowledge that it probably doesn't belong on this album. Yeah, I don't think it does. Even when I think back on the first Chronic album, I'm not sure there were any solo tracks by like snoop or anybody uh that didn't have straight up solos yeah no but there was a track with corrupt maybe corrupt got a solo really corrupt might have got a solo possibly okay but there wasn't a lot of that we ran into just three tracks just going through this that we know of there might even be more but i don't know but a lot of dre missing on tracks yeah um, you know, Hitman is in a room with monsters, you know, I mean, it's a big, these guys are heavyweights yeah. that he's, you know, on a record on. So I think that might be what doesn't work in his favor. You know, like he's not Snoop, Eminem, Exhibit even. Nope. To give him a solo is kind of brave of Dr. Dre. Right. It's a gamble. It didn't really pay off. I don't think. No, I don't think so I don't think, think so this either. aged well. You know, having Hitman on there instead of right. If I, I was know. Dre, I would have saved this for the Hitman solo. Yeah, you know, that's where it belonged. And if he would have kept it on there, and we could, uh, I mean, it fits better with Hitman shit than it does on a Dre album. At the end of the day, yeah, it's a cool track though. Yeah, um, but yeah, probably should have been on Hitman's record. Uh, after this is Bang Bang. Uh, cool beat. Um, I can bump this. I listen to it. Um, but you got Hitman and Nocturnal. I think Hitman does okay, but Nocturnal, I could skip that. Yeah, I think I skip this track. Yeah. I do skip it. I don't care for it. The beat's okay, but it doesn't save it for me. I just can't do yeah. it. Um, Nocturnal, Hitman, no offense. Well, whatever. It is what it is. Uh, I think Hitman's a little out of his element here. Right. Um, I like him on the smoother shit. Nocturnal, I just can't. He just doesn't catch fire with me. 
Um, you know, Dr. Dre, it's great that we get a Dre verse, though, yeah. which is probably what saves the track with the beat. But then it becomes hard to finish it off. Um, anyways, then that's a second to the last song. That's crazy. Yeah, that is crazy. The placement of it is questionable. Anyways, the message, the last track, it, I mean, this is a track that Dr. Dre had to do, and it had to be put on, and it had to be last for yeah. sure. You know, this type of track is always last. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's just a message to his bro. Um, if you skip this song, you're a dick. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Assholes. If you're going to hell. <laughs> Nah, you know, whatever. I'll let it ride out, finish the album if I'm in the it, mood. Yeah, it depends on the mood, I was just going to say. It ain't going but, on yeah. any of my playlists, but I might let the album finish. Right. You know? just depends what kind of mood I'm in. Yeah. Uh, I feel the same way. I mean, it should be last. Uh, I'm an asshole, so I skip it sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it just kind of depends on the mood that you're in. But, yeah. you know, yeah. I get it. Um Dre had to get that off his chest, probably been waiting to do it for a while. Yeah. Um, you forget that these guys are like normal people sometimes. Right. You know? Like, it's Dr. Dre, man. He's fucking Compton. One of the Compton kings. Smoking yeah. weed every day, packing right. a gun. He ain't got feelings. Yeah, man. Superhero he got bitches almost. and money. Yeah, exactly. Fuck feelings. Yeah. But, uh, you know, hey, he's from Compton, man. He's got shit to rap about. Yeah, people like, from tragic Compton shit. Definitely know people who died. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I can't knock the record for it because nah. I ain't going to hell. <laughs> and then you know it has a funny outro with Thomas Chong. You know. Yeah. Uh, I guess it's you could have threw that anywhere. I mean, I when I listen to the record on random, I'm. I, Sometimes you hear it. I'm like, what's this even? Yeah. <laughs> where's this from? You know? Wait, am I still on the same album? So you can tell normally where I just start, where I eject where it. starts it. to fall off, yeah, like for you. Probably Bang Bang is when I just like hit eject. Actually, Ackwright is probably where I yeah. used to really eject it. Yeah. But uh, I have a different appreciation today because I'm wiser and older. So... Hey, that's my thoughts on the record. Good shit, man. Yeah. Running it back uh, a second time, um, does that change your thoughts on it? Now that we've listened to Hitman, uh, his, his solo, does that change the way you feel about the album? Or, I mean, maybe realizing that we have less Dre on here than we did last time. You know, that kind of pissed me off that we yeah. realized that there's less, that there's even less Dre yep. on here than we thought. And the fact that the general public back then was like, this is a fucking banger classic. Yeah, we were bitch. just on his nuts. Yeah. You're a hater. Yeah. If this ain't a 10, I'm like, back then I knew this wasn't a 10. I was like, you're all are fucking blind or yeah. deaf. Like, Whatever, man. Oh, we've you heard got your tens. head up your ass. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. we knew it wasn't a classic, and today it's still not a classic. No. Running it through a few times, even after getting my education on Hitman, and giving him an appreciation now and understanding where he really is good. Right. Um, I'm gonna score it just, just a little bit better. It moves the needle a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, but there are things that piss me off when yeah. I start analyzing each one. And I don't know. I think, uh, I don't think it's a classic, but I think there's some classic tracks on there. Not oh, only yeah. classic, but timeless. Like timeless, yeah, exactly. timeless tracks. I mean, the tracks that are tens are ten pluses. You know, that's yeah. shit that's never going to fade away. Uh-uh. They're fucking statues, yep. you know. It's crazy. Um, but, you know, the, when Dre doesn't show up to work, it pisses me off, especially when, like, Hitman shows up instead. <laughs> yeah, and I wonder if Hitman has more verses here than Dre does. I don't know. Because you know he, what? He might. I think this is a Hitman record now. It could. I mean, uh, I'm just playing devil's advocate here, but, like, earlier we were joking around, 
you know, uh, before we started the podcast <laughs> or was it during the podcast? Maybe it was during the podcast, but I was like, maybe this is more like a Hitman album. I don't know. You know, if it was, I would still score it low for Hitman because I don't like Hitman, what he's doing on here for the most part. He's got yeah. a few tracks that are nice, but a lot of them, like I think he tries to, you know, get too aggressive and that's not really his style. Um, at least it's not the style that I like from him. Right. I like his, just his chill out, you know, just chilling, having fun, fucking bitches, right. you know, fuck them, this and that, you know, looking for those pretty toes type of guy, <laughs> you yeah. know? I like that guy. That's the hit man I can deal with. Um, and I hate to make him so much of a topic, but he's like everywhere. He's just scattered on the album. Well, and it started yeah. off strong, though, without him, you know. Yeah. We had a strong start without him, and then he saturated the rest of it. Yeah. So, you know, what are the highlights of this record for you? Give me, like, three tracks. Three tracks. Well, I mean, the classics that we all know of, or should I pick something? I mean, I'll try to pick something outside of the classics, because we all know which tracks are great, and there's we all know which three they are. You know, fuck you, still Dre, and then next episode, I mean... Those got to be the top three. Um, but, you know, if I'm going to look for something that stands out after after that, probably Explosive, um, Let's Get High, and uh, I'm going to choose Housewife. Nice. All right. Well, let me try and be creative as well here. I am going to pick... Fuck you, because I just think that's the best track. Yeah, it's so a classic. Great. It's a no-brainer. Um, I've, I'm going to also, well, I'm going to say what's the difference. Uh-huh. I'm going to like that track. And I'm going to retract my statement from our unreleased review where I picked Explosive. Uh-huh. Because I just realized that Dre doesn't even rap on there. Yeah. And I'm going to replace it with I'm going to replace it with Murder Inc. Nice. Yeah, Murder Inc was a good one too. Yeah, I don't even know if Dre's on, if Dre even raps on that one. No. So I just replaced it with the same shit. <laughs> but you know what? I like Murder Inc now. It's fine. Yeah. It's a cool experimental beat. I dig it. And the Michael Myers theme song has just been begging to be sampled in a rap song. I don't yeah. know if anybody else has done it, but that was the first that I've heard it. Yeah. Um, what is the crown jewel of this record then? We we talked about that last time. Is it yeah. the same? Um, you know, I think you have to give it to the next episode. Really? In my opinion. Um, it just kind of encompasses everything that the original chronic was which was dre and snoop and you know nate dog at the very end to compliment it um to me it just kind of brought everything back to the chronic one or the chronic whatever you want to call it Mm. um so i give the crown jewel to the next episode and i don't remember if i did that last time or not i'm gonna give the crown jewel to still dre Nice. I didn't do that last time. I think you chose Fuck You last time? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. But listening to it uh, this time around, I think that the the beat, you can definitely tell that Dre put the bow on it, you know, on that beat. Took his time. Took his time. Took, was very picky about everything on that song. And it showed. Pretty impressive. Um... I don't know. I love Fuck You, though. Such a great, timeless track. And the beat on that was crazy. Yeah. Like, I've never heard a song like it again, yeah. really. I, never I before it's, it's and impossible. probably never again. It's impossible to try <laughs> yeah. and duplicate it. It's a tough one to replicate. But, yeah, you know, Devin and Snoop and Dre, they're, they're great together, man. They probably hang out. Oh, yeah, for sure. But I wouldn't be surprised if they try to do tours together. No doubt. All in all, though, what do you score this? Oh, um, I'm going to stick with my original score of seven. I think I gave it a seven last time. Yeah. Um, you know, I did realize there's less Dr. Dre on here. 
than the last time. But um, to me, I had a hard time giving it that seven last time. This time around, I have a little more of an appreciation for Hitman. Um, although 6-2 did not do any favors for the album, um, you could keep them out of the album. Yeah. Um, but I'm, I'm going to roll with the seven. I'm going to give it a seven. All right. Last time I gave it a six, but this time I'm going to go ahead and give it a seven. I'm going to give it a seven, seven chronic iced teas. I think that's what it's going to get. Nice. It, I'm, it did move a little bit for me. You know, the needle moved after hearing Hitman, um, after hearing his solo album, then I understood his strengths and where he kind of was forced so I kind of like a couple songs better now. Yeah. But then I don't like them. I still don't like a lot of the songs enough to move this past to seven. Yeah. You know, the the missing Dre from some songs was just weird to me. Like having Hitman have a solo on here doesn't piss me off that much anymore, but it still kind of pisses me off. Right. <laughs> yeah. Like the song is great. I mm-hmm. like Ackwright. But why the fuck is it here? Yeah, exactly. Well, the, I what mean, the fuck? And not to take anything away from the song, Hitman killed it, you know, but it just doesn't belong on the album, you know. It's it's a Dr. Dre album, you know? Like, Dre should at least had a verse on there. Yeah. Some of the features, too, like, yeah. I think Hitman, Nocturnal, they're kind of out of their league well, on here. What about, what about, um, a lot of these we have Hitman paired up with, Six two, and yeah. nocturnal. I think so six I think, two is for show sure out of his league. Yeah, he's probably out of his league hanging with Hitman. Yeah. Um, and what's frustrating is that Dr. Dre has the world at his disposal, pretty much. Mm-hmm. Like he could have popped in some more King T, Ren. Where uh, yeah. where was Lady of Rage? Yeah. You know, Trey D. Yeah, Trey D. There Trey for D. the Would intro. Like, why didn't you? Yo, Trey D, get up in the studio. Hey, Swoop G, I know you probably hit my guts, but get on my record. Yeah, exactly. I mean, or uh, you could take it back to uh, RBX. You know, yep. there was no RBX here. We could have used the narrator on an intro or yeah, something. How sure, badass man. would that have been? For sure. Um, I would have rather heard RBX than Eddie or uh, yep. fucking the, the porn star dude, whatever. Yep. Like, RBX added a surprise element to the chronic yeah man. rbx it made was kind of like that boom big yeah. time he made the the project big because oh, he had yeah. that big voice Fuck he was yeah. like he was like the dude doing the movie trailer you know only he was mm-hmm. the rapper version yep who gets high with lady of rage who would have been yeah. epic like she was the missing ingredient i think yeah. if they had her on there this album would have probably got another point in my so, opinion and I second that, you know, if we could just drop the new guys and bring the guys from the first chronic oh, it and replace been a 10. them. Yeah. You, you have a classic on your hands. Yeah. If you bring back rage, if you bring back RBX, throw Daz in there a couple times, you got a classic man. Yeah. So, Hey, I think seven, we come to an agreement this time. Um, you know, the needle moved a little bit, but uh, it's still not a, a 10. Yeah. It is what it is. Yeah, it is what it is. And, uh, you know, not to take anything away from it, um, it did contribute to the whole future of the sound from that point. Oh, yeah, and, for sure. You know, I'll, I'll give Dre his credit there for changing the sound of, of rap music, but uh, this project in its own window. Is, yeah. is not a 10. Now, it's this is tunnel band. vision here yeah. we're looking at. Yeah. Powerful record. Yeah. But in my tunnel vision, not a 10. So, hey, what can you say, though? There's a, there's some dope gems on here. Hella dope. Yeah, there's, I mean, there's going to be, tra- there's tracks on here that are 10 pluses that other artists will never achieve. Oh, yeah. Never. So, uh, extreme highs some extreme lows but overall i just kind of feel like it's yeah i think album. extreme highs extreme lows in it in the middle when you average it all out it kind of hits a seven yep. so yeah 
Hell yeah. Um, shit. Uh, any final thoughts other than that? I don't think so. I think we uh, ran through. We ran Dr. Dre to the ground yeah. the last couple of weeks, man. Sorry, Hitman. And Hitman too. Kind of just checked him out. And checking him out know. was cool, you know. Yeah, checking um, him out was cool. He's just not quite in his element here on the Chronic, and that's all right. I think that's uh, more the fault of Dre not having the ear to realize that. Um, well, I mean, he's not the first, and he wasn't the last, right? To uh, you know, just have Dre ghost him. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, so, it's a risky business, man. It is what it is, though. Well, it'll be interesting to see what the next Dre pro- uh, project has to bring to the table. Hopefully, there is another one. We know Crooked Eye's writing for him a lot. He's got all the right people in the studio right now. Yeah, so, it should be really interesting you know, with Crooked Eye. Let's see what ghost writing there. What happens from there? Mm-hmm. All right, man. Well, hit us up on therapthrowback.com. Check out our YouTube channel. Subscribe if you're checking us out now on there. You know, you can find us on Spotify, SoundCloud, Apple Podcasts, and all that jazz. This is your boy Megatron coming straight out of Cybertron here with my boy Soundwave. What up? What up? You guys are inferior and I am superior. Something like that. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I don't exactly remember how Soundwave said it, but yeah. Soundwave superior. You guys in theory are, you know, something like that. Anyways. On that note. On that note, I'm out. You can cut that out out. of there, and I'm out.